Which country has the fewest people? Once again, Vatican City wins the smallest award. In addition to being the smallest in area. Vatican City also, not surprisingly, has the smallest population about 850 people. The country with the second smallest population is Tuvalu, formerly called Ellis Islands. Home to fewer than 10,000 people, Tuvalu consists of a string of nine coral atolls. Which are like donut shaped islands rings of coral with lagoons in the center. Located in a region in the South Pacific called Polynesia. What is gravity? Gravity, or gravitation, is the force of attraction that exists between any two particles of matter, or any two objects. It is the force that holds planets in their orbits around the Sun, or the Moon in its orbit around Earth. As the distance between two objects increases, their gravitational attraction decreases. Gravity is also the force that holds any object to Earth or to any other heavenly body instead of allowing it to fly into space. The larger an object, the greater its gravitational pull. That explains with American astronauts that landed on the moon could leap about with little effort. With the moon much smaller than Earth, its gravitational pull is one-sixth as strong as that of our planet. Gravity also explains why Earth and other planets and heavenly bodies are fairly round in shape. When our solar system was formed, gravity drew the dust and gases hurtling through space into lumps. When a great amount of matter is pulled together at one time. It crowds together into the shape of a ball because gravity pulls everything toward a center point. Still, Earth is not perfectly round. As it rotates on its axis, the spinning causes an additional force to pull against gravity. Making Earth bulge out a little around its middle. Why are male birds more colorful than female birds? In some species, like the North American cardinal, the male bird has brilliantly colored feathers while the female's feathers are drab and dark. One reason the males have a more colorful appearance is so they can capture the attention of the female bird they wish to mate with. The male's bright colors also come in handy after mating. When he's protecting the nest and sending a clear signal to other males to keep away from his territory. The female's dull colors, on the other hand, Help her blend in with the branches surrounding her nest and avoid being seen by enemies. If her feathers were bright like the males, she would be easily spotted by predators. And she would have to leave her nest unprotected if attacked. How high can birds fly? In their regular, 
everyday lives, most birds fly below 500 feet, 150 meters. While during migration many birds fly at an altitude of around 10,000 feet, 3,000 meters. Some extraordinary birds have been spotted flying as high as 29,000 feet, 8,700 meters. That's more than 5 miles, and nearly 9 kilometers, off the ground. Bar-headed geese were seen at that altitude flying over the Himalayas. And an airline pilot spotted hooper swans at that height over Northern Ireland. Migrating birds know not only what direction to fly in, but how best to get there. They seek the altitude that allows them to fly most efficiently, rising high where the wind is fastest when it's behind them. And staying low to use trees and buildings to block the wind when it's coming at them. Do camels really store water in their humps? Camels store fat, not water, in the humps on their backs. Living in desert environments, camels use this stored fat for energy if food is not available. The animals can go days without eating. A camel can also go days without drinking because there are pockets in the walls of its stomach that hold water, released bit by bit as the animal needs it. A camel can drink up to 50 gallons, 189 liters, of water at one time and store it. There are two types of camels the Arabian camel or dromedary native to northern Africa which has one hump, and the Bactrian camel native to Central Asia which has two. For centuries, camels have been used by people to cross the desert, either rid den or used as pack animals carrying supplies. That is why the large, Strong Beast has often been called the ship of the desert. Able to endure intense heat, camels have many other features that make them well suited to desert surroundings. Their broad, padded hooves do not sink in the sand and their long eyelashes and hair-filled nostrils protect their eyes and airways from blowing grit. But their most unique features are their stomachs and humps of fat. At the beginning of a desert journey, when a camel is well fed, its hump can weigh nearly 100 pounds, 45 kilograms. At the end of a long, hard trip, the hump nearly disappears. And all that is left is the loose skin that once covered it kind of like a furry balloon that has lost its air. Which language is the most widely spoken? It is not surprising that Chinese the language spoken in the world's most populous country is the world's most widely spoken language. Although many different versions or dialects of Chinese are spoken in the country. The standard or official language Mandarin Chinese is spoken in its northern and central regions. It is the native language of nearly 900 million people. Spanish is the second most widely spoken language, and English is third. English is the most common international language. Spoken in more places around the world than any other.
How many hairs do I have on my head? The average person has about 100,000 hairs on his or her head. People with red hair have less than this, around 90,000, and blondes have more, around 140,000. People with brown or black hair fall in between. Most people lose between 50 and 100 head hairs each day, but new hairs are usually ready to replace them. What is an uncle? An uncle is the brother of your mother or father. He can also be the man who marries your mother or father's sister. You may also know a man who is not related to you a close family friend who loves and encourages you. For example that you refer to as your uncle. How do helicopters fly? Although a helicopter doesn't have wings like an airplane. It uses the same principle of lift to rise and maneuver in the air. The blades of a helicopter's propeller-like top rotor are shaped just like a Plane's wings flat on the bottom and rounded on the top and are likewise adjustable. Instead of rushing forward through the air like a plane does to gather enough lift to fly. A helicopter moves only its, 3 to 6, rotor blades, which are attached to a central shaft driven by an engine. The rotor blades slice through enough air creating the changes in surrounding air pressure that produce lift to achieve flight. Adjusting the angle at which the rotor blades are set helps control a helicopter's lift and manner of flight. Because the angle of the rotor is adjustable, too, a helicopter has far greater maneuverability than an airplane. Besides moving up, down, and forward, it can fly backwards and hover in the air. One problem with a helicopter's design is the spinning force of its main rotor. As the rotor blades of a helicopter turn, its shaft pushes back on the craft, trying to spin it in the opposite direction. The helicopter would spin out of control if it were not for an equal, counteracting force. This force is supplied by a second, smaller rotor located vertically on the craft's tail. Acting like a propeller, the thrust from this rotor pushes the tail in the direction opposite the twisting force of the main rotor. A helicopter pilot can adjust the thrust of this tail rotor in order to turn his or her craft. Some large helicopters that carry heavy loads have two top rotors, which supply twice as much lift. In such cases there is no need for a tail rotor because each horizontal rotor spins in an opposite direction. What makes my knuckles crack? There are tiny amounts of fluid around your joints, the place where two or more bones meet. That keeps them lubricated so they can move easily. 
when you stretch your fingers quickly. The pressure in the fluid around your finger joints changes, and empty spaces are created. As fluid rushes back to fill the spots, it produces the cracking noises you hear. Other joints knees, ankles, neck may crack sometimes when you change their positions, too. Why does everyone look different? Genes inherited from your parents decide how you look. They determine the color of your eyes, skin, hair, and so much more. They decide how your face will look, how your body will be shaped, and how tall you will grow. There are thousands and thousands of these influential genes inside each one of us. When you first began, a sperm cell from your father carrying half the genes that you would inherit fertilized an egg cell from your mother, which had the other half. These two sets of genes contained all the information needed to create a new human being. So the genes you inherited from your mother gave you some of your features. While the genes you got from your father gave you others. Or their genes may have combined to give you traits that are controlled by many genes. The random mix of genes explains why you may resemble your parents but still have a special look all your own. And it also explains why brothers and sisters can look so different from each other. People from all over the world may look very different from one another, too. Some have very dark skin and curly hair. Others have almond-shaped eyes and dark, straight hair. Still others have light skin, hair, and eyes. The ancestors of these people came from different parts of the world. Where distinct genes not shared by other people were inherited and passed on. Still, the number of genes that make people of the world look different is. Very small compared to the huge number that we all share as human beings. How many countries are there in the world? There are about 191 countries in the world today. But because the political world is constantly changing, that number never stays the same for very long. For example, in the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Fighting ethnic groups have declared the regions of Serbia and Montenegro separate countries. But until the United States and other nations accept their independence and national borders, the regions will not officially become countries. What is a library? A library is a collection of reading materials, and sometimes music and videos. Two, that is kept available for people to use but not to buy. The first public library was established in Greece in 330 BC for use by certain members of the population. The first circulating library, which allowed materials to be taken out by paying members and returned after use. 
was begun by Benjamin Franklin in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. In 1732. But not until the late 19th century could the general population borrow books from public libraries for free. Today, taxes paid by people who live in cities and towns provide most of the funding for local public libraries. So, in a way, that makes you and everyone else in your community joint owners of your local library and of all the wonderful books, videos, CDs, and other resources that it has in it. Why are most big cities located near water? Most large cities got their starts in the days before trains, airplanes, or cars. Land travel back then consisted of riding horses. Bumping along rough roads in animal-drawn wagons or carriages, or making one's way by foot. In those days, the easiest way to travel long distances was by ship. So towns with good harbors that were located on oceans, lakes, and rivers became gathering places. Travelers got on and off ships there, sometimes bringing goods from faraway places, called importing. Such towns became trading centers, developing their own businesses to make goods to ship away, or export. Workers moved into these towns to fill the growing numbers of jobs. And others came to provide services for the increasing populations building lodging, banks, and stores. Being located near water allowed many towns to prosper, growing into cities. Are there people in the world who don't wear any clothes at all? Yes, believe it or not, there are people in the world who don't wear any clothing at all. Tribes of primitive people still exist in places like the Pacific Island of New Guinea and especially in the Amazon region of South America. Some of these tribes members have never met modern men. And women and know nothing about the industrial world. These native, or indigenous, people live much like people did in prehistoric times. Eating what grows naturally in their jungle homes and hunting with bows and arrows. In the warm, humid climates in which they live, they have no need for protective clothing. And in some cases don't have the skills or tools to make cloth. Because of their lack of contact with people from other places. They are not familiar with the idea of modesty or the practice of covering the body with clothes. Which is a behavior that most people learn quickly when they are growing up. Being naked is as natural to these primitive peoples as wearing clothing is to us. In our modern world, there are also people known as nudists who Enjoy not wearing clothes because it gives them a feeling of freedom. While these men and women wear clothing most of the time as they go about their regular lives, they sometimes get together in special, isolated places with others who enjoy the practice, too. What are the reflectors on my bicycle for?
Reflectors help protect you when you are riding your bicycle in the dark. When a car approaches you the light waves produced by its headlights hit. Your reflectors and bounce back into the eyes of the driver. Making him or her aware of where you are and helping that person drive past you carefully. Reflectors are located at the front and back of your bike, as well as on your pedals. That way you can be seen regardless of the direction in which you are heading. Reflectors are usually made of hard colored plastic with a backing of reflective material. The inner surface of the plastic is cut into many tiny angles. Kind of like the sides, or facets, of a diamond. These bounce light waves around inside before they are reflected away. Which explains why reflectors are so startlingly bright. When you ride your bike at night it is also a good idea to wear reflective clothing. With strips of material or tape attached that bounce back light. Light colored clothing will also make you more visible. And if you have to bicycle in the street. Travel along the right side of the road, in the same direction that traffic goes. Be especially careful when cars approach. Because their drivers may still not see you, despite your reflectors. Which of the big cats is the most dangerous? Probably, for people, the most dangerous of the big cats is the leopard. Although not as large as the lion or tiger. The leopard a good climber that lurks. In trees and on the ground will attack a human when hunting or when startled. Lions and tigers usually try to avoid fights with people. How are caves formed? Caves are hollows in rock, either above or below ground. They are almost always formed when water wears away or dissolves rock. Although disturbances in Earth's crust like earthquakes and volcanoes can also create caves. When ocean waves crash against rocky cliffs, they carve out caves there over time. When an underground stream or rainwater repeatedly flows across the cracks of soft rock. Like limestone or seeps through it the rock slowly dissolves, and a cave is formed. The world's deepest cave is at Rousseau Jean Bernard, located in France. It is 5,036 feet, 1,535 meters, deep. In Kentucky, at Mammoth Cave National Park, visitors can see the longest cave system. A series of connected caves, in the world. It extends more than 330 miles, 530 kilometers. It would seem that nothing could live or grow in deep caves or long cave systems. So far away from sunlight. But cave explorers have found that this is not true. Caves are home to some strange plants and animals that have adapted to their sunless surroundings. Many have no color or pigment neither of which would serve a purpose in their pitch-black world. 
Some animals are sightless for the same reason. Caves are fascinating places because they were the first homes of prehistoric men and women. Before they learned to build shelters. Caves often hold clues to what life was like when people were in their earliest stages of development. Fossil remains, ancient tools. And even primitive paintings made by cave dwellers can be found in some caves. How do computers work? A computer, like all digital machines, changes writing, images, and sound into a special numerical language. It is a binary, or two-part, language that has just two number pairs. 0 and 1. These numbers are called binary digits, or bits for short. In a digital machine, the numbers take the form of electric signals. With a 1 the electricity is switched on and with a 0 it is switched off. Information of all kinds, then, is turned into electrical on-off signals arranged in countless individual patterns. These patterns can be stored, sent along digital pathways or converted back into forms that we can use and understand with extraordinary speed and accuracy. Bits enter a personal computer from the keypad, mouse, microphone, and scanner. They are received and sent out by the modem, as well as stored in various memory devices. The computer screen, printer, and speakers convert the bits into forms of information that we can use. Why are men's and women's bicycles built differently? The crossbars on bicycle frames give them added strength. On a man's or boy's bike the crossbar extends straight across the top of the frame, just below the seat. On a woman's or girl's bike the crossbar is attached to the seat tube at an angle, far below the seat. Because of this structure, women's bikes are not nearly as sturdy as men's bikes. When bicycles were first built, women didn't wear pants, they always wore skirts or dresses. The low crossbars on their bikes allowed them to get on ride, and get off with dignity without showing their underwear. The design of bicycles for women and girls, then, is based on a long-standing tradition and still offers the advantage of easier mounting and dismounting. But today, women and girl bicyclists wear pants or shorts. When riding and can easily use bikes designed for men. As a matter of fact, serious female bicyclists who do a lot of riding or travel. Through tough terrain and need bikes with sturdier frames by those made for men. Which is colder? the North Pole or the South Pole? The Antarctic, the region of the South Pole, is colder than the Arctic, the region of the North Pole. 
temperatures are warmer in the Arctic because there is no huge land mass there. And the ice cover in the region sometimes breaks, allowing some of the warmth of the Arctic Ocean into the air. It's hard to think of the Arctic Ocean as warm, but it has enough thermal energy or heat to raise the air temperature several degrees. The Antarctic, on the other hand, consists almost entirely of Antarctica. A continent of 5.5 million square miles, 8.8 .8 million square kilometers. Covered with ice, with an average thickness of 6,500 feet, or 1,982 meters. Winter temperatures in Antarctica can be some 50 degrees Fahrenheit. 10 degrees Celsius, colder than those in the Arctic. Why is there wax in my ears? Located in the one-inch passageway, or canal, of your outer ear are 4,000 special glands that make wax. Because it's sticky, ear wax catches dust, dirt, and other things before they can travel farther into the ear. As you chew and talk, the muscles of your face move the lining of the ear canal. And old wax eventually works its way out of the ear. It is not a good idea to clean your ears with a stick or swab. Because that can push ear wax against the eardrum and cause damage. A few people produce too much ear wax, which causes blockages that reduce hearing. When this happens, a doctor should remove it. Why are there traffic lights? Traffic lights were invented to control the safe flow of traffic on streets. They came into widespread use after the invention of the automobile. Until then, people generally didn't require formal traffic rules and control devices. Relying instead on polite behavior and common sense when they traveled. But when fast and noisy motor vehicles began to fill the streets, it became clear that traffic control was needed. Lights that stopped some drivers, while allowing others to proceed was one way to protect both cars and pedestrians, people on foot, from collisions and to avoid traffic buildups. The first traffic light was erected in 1868 in downtown London, England. This redand green tinted gas lantern, hung on a tall iron pole, could be turned in one direction or another by a handle at its base. Of course, at the time, automobiles had not yet been invented. But the number of steam engine vehicles, animal drawn wagons, and carriages, and pedestrians had become so plentiful at the busy corner. At Parliament Square, that a traffic light was needed to prevent accidents. The electric traffic signal was invented by Garrett Morgan. An African American businessman and inventor, in Cleveland, Ohio. After buying his first automobile, Morgan realized the need for some traffic control at intersections. He invented a traffic light based on the signals used at railroad crossings, he received a patent for it. 
that is, he registered the invention as his with the government. In 1923, some early traffic signals had red and green lights and a warning buzzer that sounded as the color changed. But as automobile traffic and noise increased, people thought that a visual warning between going and stopping would work better than one that was heard. An amber or yellow light was added to traffic signals to warn drivers to prepare to stop. Why does your shadow change shape during a sunny day? It has to do with the location of the sun and the angle of the light waves that hit you. When the sun is high in the sky, the angle of its light waves in relation to you produce a short, squat shadow. When the sun is low in the sky, early or late in the day, it produces a long, giant-sized shadow. One way to think about this concept is to pretend you could draw a line from the sun that schemes the top of your head and ends on the ground behind you. When the sun is right above you, that line will end very close to your body, and so will your shadow. When the sun is low during evening hours, that line, and your shadow, will end farther behind you. How did clothing develop? People first started wearing clothing to keep warm and dry and to protect themselves against the blazing sun. Scratching plants, and attacking animals. Early men and women used animal furs as clothing, wrapping them around their waists and shoulders. But since ancient times, clothing has also been a means of expression. A way in which people have let others know more about themselves. Even in prehistoric times people used dress to indicate which group they belonged to. Their status or position within their group or tribe, and as an expression of their customs and religious beliefs. Early men and women used strings of beads or stones, feathers and other ornaments to make themselves look special and different from one another. Early on, people found that by scraping animal hides and treating them with fats they could make them softer and more flexible. This allowed the skins to be cut, sewn, and shaped into better fitting clothing. Thin strips of leather drawn through holes in the hides kept the pieces together. Finer sewing could be done once sharp needles that could pierce the skins were developed. Starting about 50,000 years ago, these were usually carved from wood or bone. Then people began to make cloth. Cloth is material made from threads that are woven together in a crisscross pattern. About 10,000 years ago, people first made cloth out of animal hair that was spun into thread. When the short hairs of an animal were overlapped and twisted together. Long strands could be made, which were then woven into fabric. People in ancient Asia used the hair of sheep, camels, and goats to make cloth. In other parts of the world people used the hairs of different animals of mountain creatures like llamas and alpacas in South America. And of horses, buffalo, and moose in North America to make their cloth. 
and it could be colored by using dyes made from certain plants and even animals. In ancient Greece, for example, a rich red dye was made from the skin of the tiny Kermes worm. Ancient Egyptians were some of the first people to make cloth. Beginning around 5000 BC. Instead of using animal hair, the Egyptians wove together the long fibers of flax plants to make lightweight linen, perfect for their desert climate. Historians think that they got the idea for weaving from fishermen, who made nets by tying threads together in a special way with weights attached to their ends to keep them tight, straight, and free from tangling. As centuries passed, clothing continued to be used to express the identity and status of its wearer. The clothes of farmers and tradespeople like blacksmiths and carpenters, for example, remain simple and sturdy. Meant to last a long time, their clothing styles were also loose, making them easy to work in. But wealthy people could afford fine fabrics from faraway places. And they had the luxury of thinking about the way their outfits were shaped and decorated. They could show their higher social status by wearing clothing styles that were sometimes wildly impractical things that would never be worn by someone who performed manual labor for a living. In the 14th century, for instance, long-pointed shoes were in fashion. Some with 20-inch toes that had to be stuffed with moss to keep their shape. A farmer certainly couldn't work in his fields in shoes like that. Immense hanging sleeves and corsets that pinched waists in to make them smaller worn. By both men and women are other examples of impractical and uncomfortable fashions. Why should I cover my mouth and nose when I cough and sneeze? Coughing and sneezing spray germs into the air, where other people can breathe them in. It's very common for colds and other infections to be spread from one person to another by the germs expelled when a sick person coughs or sneezes. When you cover your mouth or nose when you cough or sneeze. You catch some germs in your tissue or hands which keeps them from entering the air. But another common way of spreading germs is through physical contact. Especially from the hand of one person to another. So it is important to wash your hands, too, after you cough or sneeze. Even better than covering your mouth with your hand is coughing or sneezing onto your shirt sleeve in the crook of your elbow. That way, the germs from your mouth end up on your sleeve. Which is far less likely than your hand to have contact with other people. And the germs on your sleeve will soon die if they aren't passed along to another person. Why do a lot of old people have wrinkled skin? Skin is made up of two layers. The thin surface layer is called the epidermis. The thicker layer underneath the dermis contains sweat glands and hair follicles. New skin cells are made in the dermis, which gives your skin its firm and elastic, or stretchy, feel. 
When people get older, the fibers that make up skin become thinner and lose their elasticity. Places where skin is repeatedly stretched and folded from smiling or frowning. For example no longer snap back into place and lines and wrinkles form there. Constant exposure to the sun and cigarette smoking do serious damage to the dermis. Speeding up the normal changes that occur in skin as people get older. What is the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth? The coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth was at the Russian research station Vostok in Antarctica on July 21, 1983. The temperature was minus 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 89.6 degrees Celsius. How does a light bulb work? Electricity runs through a thin, coiled wire, or filament, in a light bulb. The filament is made of a metal called tungsten, which can reach very high temperatures before it melts. This high melting temperature is a good thing, because when electricity runs through the filament of a light bulb, it reaches a temperature of about 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit, 2,482 degrees Celsius. As the filament becomes white hot, it glows, or becomes incandescent. That glow is the light of an electric bulb. Wires that carry electricity usually allow it to flow through easily. But when wire is very thin like in the filament of a light bulb electrical currents have to force their way through. Causing friction, which causes heat, which, in this case, results in incandescence. Instead of air, light bulbs are filled with a gas called argon. Air has oxygen in it, which all things need to burn. If the super hot filament of a light bulb were exposed to air, it would burn out instantly, instead of giving hundreds of hours of light. How do trains run? A train is a series of unpowered cars pulled along tracks by a locomotive, or engine. The locomotive is run by a motor either electric or a diesel-electric combination that provides the power that turns its wheels, moving the engine and the cars attached to it. A single locomotive can pull dozens and dozens of cars, some trains reach more than a mile in length. Electric motors are used only for trains that run over the same track for short distances. They receive electricity from wires that run above the track. Trolleys and streetcars are types of electric trains. A subway train is powered by electricity delivered through a third rail on its tracks. Unlike electric engines, Diesel-electric engines can provide the amount of power needed to propel locomotives that travel long distances and pull great weights. Burning diesel oil powers a generator that creates electricity. The electricity powers motors that turn the wheels. 
for many decades, before diesel oil was used. Locomotive engines were powered by superheated steam, made by burning coal or wood in large furnaces. What is an island? An island is a body of land surrounded by water. While continents are also bodies of land surrounded by water, they are much larger in size. The smallest continent of the world is Australia. It has almost 3 million square miles, close to 8 million square kilometers, of area. That makes it almost four times the size of the world's biggest island Greenland which has an area of around 840,000 square miles, 2,175,000 square kilometers. How many people are there in the world? And the ancient Romans ruled much of the known world around a d100 there were an estimated 250 million people on earth it took nearly 16 centuries for that population to double to about 500 million people by the mid 1800s the industrial revolution had brought about such improvements in living conditions as well as in food production and distribution, that the world's population doubled again, to 1 billion people. By 1930 that number had reached 2 billion. By 2000 the number of people on Earth exceeded 6 billion. The world's population is increasing as never before, due to scientific advances in medicine and technology and continued improvements in healthcare, living conditions, and food production around the world. Most countries no longer have the high death rates that were once unavoidable because of hunger and disease. And high birth rates continue in many parts of the world, contributing to our rapid population growth. What causes snoring? When people breathe through their mouths rather than their noses when they sleep. Because the nasal passageways are swollen or stuffed for some reason snoring may occur. The rough. Horse snoring noise results when the soft tissue at the back of the roof of the mouth, called the soft palate, vibrates during breathing. Males snore far more often than females. Scientists think that may be because men are generally bigger and have more tissue in their soft palates. Some people snore so loudly that they wake themselves up. Why does scratching help quiet an itch? Scientists think that scratching gives your touch sensors a stronger feeling to focus on. And the itch is ignored, at least temporarily. Why do worms come out after it rains?
Go outside near any patch of dirt on a warm summer afternoon after a rainfall. And you are sure to find plenty of earthworms on driveways and sidewalks. Scientists are not certain why this happens. But the worms may emerge from the soil to escape from the rainwater that has filled their tunnel homes. While earthworms require a certain amount of moisture, they can drown if they're submerged in water. Unfortunately, their escape from the rain-soaked soil onto a warm driveway can also prove deadly. If the sun comes out before a worm can make it back to some dirt, it can get dried out. How do boa constrictors kill their prey? Injecting animals with venom is not the only method used by snakes to control their prey. One group of snakes, called the constrictors, do not produce venom but are every bit as deadly to the animals they hunt. The constrictors, including boa constrictors and pythons, use the powerful muscles in their bodies to squeeze the life out of their prey. They coil themselves around the animal they've caught, squeezing until its blood can no longer circulate. Boa constrictors eat mostly birds and mice, and they can grow to be around 14 feet, 4.3 meters, long. The female boa is among the few snakes whose young develop within her body. She gives birth to live snakes, perhaps as many as 50 at one time. Pythons, which live in parts of Asia, Africa and Australia, are among the biggest snakes in the world. With the larger species getting as long as 30 feet, 9 meters. Why do hummingbirds hum? The joke answer, because they don't know the words. The real answer, hummingbirds wings flap so quickly that they create a high-pitched humming sound. Just as mosquitoes and other insects generate a buzzing sound from their high-speed wing flapping. How do they know how to do that? Scientists have studied migratory patterns of many different species. And they have developed theories as to how birds can find their way, but ultimately, they don't know for sure what techniques birds use. Birds might use the stars and the moon to guide their way, or they may have a sort of internal compass that helps them detect Earth's magnetic field, thereby showing them which way is north. Some birds may also be able to detect low-level sounds made by ocean waves. Sounds that can provide clues about direction. Perhaps many birds are capable of using more than one navigational technique. If not, the birds that use the stars to find their way would be lost on cloudy nights. Why is kindergarten important? In the United States, public schooling begins with kindergarten, when a child is about five years old. 
Kindergarten is a half day of classes in an elementary school. While most of the activities in kindergarten are play activities like singing, storytelling, and drawing children are also learning basic skills through these activities that they will need throughout their lives. These skills include listening to directions, using their time well, and working in cooperation with others. Kindergarten helps children adjust to school slowly, going only a few hours each day. It bridges the gap between the age when kids spend their days playing, at home, or in daycare or nursery school. And the more formal learning that will begin once a child enters the first grade. A German educator named Friedrich Froebel opened the first. Kindergarten in 1837. Its name is German for Garden of Children. Why do people do drugs? People may begin taking drugs out of a desire to rebel against their parents or society. Or because they long to experiment with new feelings and experiences. Many people take drugs to escape from problems with family or at school. For most people, drug use begins because they like the way. They feel when they are under a drug's influence, or high. Different drugs have different effects some are stimulants. Which means they give an energy boost and create a feeling of excitement. Others are depressants, which means they slow down the body's systems and produce a calm, relaxed feeling. But no matter how a drug makes you feel. It can't get rid of the things in your life that made you feel like escaping in the first place. In fact, drug use usually makes matters worse. Drugs reduce your ability to cope with difficult emotions on your own. And they will make problems you might be having in school or with your family even worse. While many people refuse to see the harmful effects of drugs, particularly when they first begin taking them. The fact is that every drug has the potential to be harmful, and many drugs can cause death. Drug habits are expensive, and they frequently cause unpleasant personality changes in the user. Which results in strained relationships with family members and friends. Many people make the mistake of believing that the more accessible legal drugs, like cigarettes and alcohol, are not as dangerous as illegal drugs. But legal drugs can have serious consequences, if a person consumes very large quantities of alcohol. Even if it's his or her first time drinking, it can result in a coma or even death. Many young people wrongly believe that inhaling household chemicals produces an easy and safe high. But inhalants, by coating the lungs and preventing the absorption of oxygen, can also kill whether it's the first time or the 50th. One danger common to nearly all drugs is that, while under the influence, your judgment is impaired and you are more likely to do something that could harm yourself or others. Why do dogs pant? When people get hot, millions of tiny sweat glands, located deep in their skin, 
produce sweat, or perspiration, which evaporates into the air and cools them. Dogs, however, have very few sweat glands. So they pant or breathe hard to cool off, which works in a similar way. Panting produces a strong flow of air that blows away moisture from a dog's lungs and mouth. The evaporating moisture takes some of the dog's body heat away with it. Just like a sweating person, a panting dog usually needs a good drink of water to maintain body fluids and keep the cooling process going when conditions are hot. Why do donuts have holes? A donut is a little cake fried in oil that has a hole in the middle. Since ancient times, almost all cultures have had some type of fried cake. It is believed that American author Washington Irving, who wrote the stories The Legend of Sleepy Hollow and Rip Van Winkle, came up with the name donut when he described the balls of fried. Sweetened dough made by Dutch settlers in colonial New York as doughnuts. A sea captain named Gregory Hansen is given the credit for inventing the hole in the doughnut. Legend relates that one night while Hansen was eating a fried cake and piloting his ship, a storm arose. Needing both hands free to steer. He jammed his cake over a spoke of the ship's wheel and the donut was created. The captain was so pleased with his invention that he ordered the ship's cook to put holes in the fried cakes from then on. Why do people say that they feel like they have butterflies in their stomachs then? That's just a phrase that describes the fluttery feeling like the beating of delicate butterfly wings that some people get in their stomachs when they're nervous or excited. What is wind chill? Wind chill describes the chilling effect that moving air or wind has on the way we feel different temperatures and on the way our bodies react to them. Two days with the same outdoor temperature will seem quite different if one is very windy and one is not. Because the wind carries heat away from the surface of our bodies, making us feel colder. This effect is called the wind chill factor. A wind chill index or chart has been developed that shows how certain wind speeds or velocities make different temperatures feel. In very cold climates it is important to know the wind chill, it tells people who live there how to dress to protect their skin from frostbite, a freezing of the skin that can cause permanent damage. What can be done to minimize pollution? Wherever there are a lot of people, and wherever there are industries, there will be pollution. It cannot be eliminated, but it can be reduced. And many laws have been passed in the United States and elsewhere to help accomplish that.
these laws help establish pollution standards. Requiring industries to release fewer pollutants into the air and water. But several obstacles remain. Some industries have successfully lobbied lawmakers to be less strict about pollution controls. Many industries are reluctant to cooperate with the laws that have been passed. Stating that the required changes are too expensive. And federal agencies lack the funding to enforce the existing laws. So many companies ignore the tighter standards about how much polluting they can do. In spite of these obstacles, there is much that can be done to clean up our air, water, and land. Some car companies have begun building cars that burn fuel more cleanly or that operate on a more environmentally friendly mix of gas and electricity. Producers of gasoline can make adjustments to the fuel so that fewer harmful emissions are released when it is burned. Sewage treatment plants, if they install the right equipment, can remove nearly all the waste before dumping what's left in bodies of water. Factories can treat their waste to neutralize or remove much of the harmful chemicals before dumping. Alternative energy sources harnessing the power of water or the sun. For instance can be used to supplement the gas and oil that is used now. Landfills can be constructed so that underground pipes carry away the dangerous methane gas. Using it to provide power. They can also be covered with dirt, grass, and trees to create a playground or a park. Farmers can use fewer chemicals, relying instead on organic farming methods, free of man made chemicals. Individuals and families can also play a part in reducing pollution. Taking part in community recycling efforts and using biodegradable items to create compost. Which can then be used in the garden, helps reduce each family's weekly amount of garbage. Families can also make an effort to use less water and electricity. And choosing to buy organic food supports the farmers who have decided to avoid harmful chemicals. Where do people live in cities? Big cities have a lot of things to offer residents and visitors, but one thing they don't have is space. The people who live in a city can't spread out but they can spread up. City dwellers usually make their homes in apartment. Buildings or condominiums that are several stories high. These allow a large number of people to be housed on a little bit of land. Some of these buildings have hundreds of residents. High-rise homes have actually been around for centuries. In ancient Rome, poor people lived in multi-story apartments. In Yemen, a country in Southwest Asia. High-rise homes made of mud bricks have been used for more than a thousand years. Without modern building materials like steel and concrete, though, multi-story buildings can't rise very high. Because they become too heavy to be supported by their foundations. Why is the sky blue?
the white light of the sun consists of many wavelengths. When seen separately, each wavelength corresponds with a different color. The air molecules and particles of matter that make up our atmosphere scatter some of the sun's light as it travels to Earth. Especially the shorter wavelengths that give us the color blue. Coming to us from all angles in the sky, these light waves make the sky appear blue. Why doesn't it hurt when I have my hair or nails cut? The hair that shows above your skin is composed of dead cells made up of a tough protein called keratin. Toenails and fingernails are also made of keratin. So hair and nails have no feeling above the surface of your skin. They are alive below the skin, though, where their roots are attached to nerves. That is why it hurts when someone pulls your hair, they are tugging at live roots. But having your hair and nails cut doesn't hurt at all. How is fabric made from plants? Since ancient times, people have been using the fibers of plants to make cloth. Cotton, which comes from the cotton plant, and linen. Made from the flax plant, are the most important of these. The seeds of shrub-like cotton plants are surrounded by long, fluffy white fibers. The seeds and fibers are enclosed in capsules, or bowls. The bowls are picked either by hand or machine. And then the fibers are separated the from bowl and from the seeds. The fibers are then spun into yarn or thread strong enough to weave into cloth. Weaving is done on looms which are frames or machines that interlace yarns or threads together. Different types of cotton plants produce fibers with different qualities. With some grown for their sturdiness and some for softness. For centuries, cotton has been grown in many parts of the world. And the cloth and objects made from it have provided valuable trade between countries. But because cotton grows best in mild climates with plenty of rain. The United States is now the biggest producer of cotton. To make linen, the stems of tall flax plants are soaked until they are partially decomposed. Their long fibers are then removed and used to make yarn or thread that is woven into fabric. Until the widespread use of cotton for clothing. Beginning around 1800, people generally wore linen clothes. Linen has been used for so long that examples of it have been found in Egyptian tombs more than 3,500 years old. Although linen is stronger and finer than cotton, it is harder to make because its fibers break easily. Linen is made in many parts of the world, with Ireland being its biggest producer. Why do I have to wipe myself after I go to the bathroom? It is important to wipe yourself after you go to the bathroom for a couple of reasons. 
First, it keeps your clothes from becoming soiled. Second, it protects your skin from the irritation that can result if traces of urine and feces are left there. Feces contain a lot of bacteria that can multiply once they leave the body especially in areas that are moist and airless, like around your bottom. A rash and sores can result when waste is left on the skin. So wiping helps you stay dry and clean. Why do soldiers salute one another? It is believed that the tradition of saluting raising the right hand to the forehead got its start many centuries ago. During the time when knights fought in full suits of armor. When two knights met, they had to raise the visors on their medal. Helmets to identify themselves and to see if they were friends or enemies. The motion associated with lifting the visor continued when two fighting men met. Even when soldiers no longer wore armor. This behavior turned into the salute. The salute became a sign of recognition and respect. Used especially by military men and women when in the presence of a military superior someone who ranks above them. What are vertebrates? Vertebrata, or vertebrates, are a subphylum of the phylum called Chaudata. Human beings, as well as most of the animals we experience in our everyday lives mammals. Birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish are classified as vertebrates. The most obvious characteristic of vertebrates is a backbone, which can be made of bone or cartilage. Vertebrates have a complex spinal cord that runs along the length of the animal's body and contains a nervous system. At the top of the spinal cord is a brain and sense organs that allow animals to see, hear, and smell. Vertebrates also have bodies that are bilaterally symmetrical. Which means that the left side is basically a mirror image of the right. There are 45,000 living vertebrate species. Vertebrates live in nearly every region of the world, adapting to life on land, in the air, and in the sea. <laughs>